Hello, I'm Danny Jenkins, CEO and co-founder of ThreatLocker. I started my cybersecurity career really in IT. I started IT when I left school at 15 years old. And from there, I developed very quickly into corporate IT, started multiple email security companies, and then became an ethical hacker for a few years. Now, this started off as me trying to get into companies. One of the things I challenged was, hey, can I get into your company? If I can, then you'll pay me to help you secure your company. And that was good fun, but it turned into mostly me doing ransomware recoveries. Lots of companies were calling me saying, hey, we've been hit by ransomware. I don't know what to do. The current IT company doesn't know what they're doing. So I'd go in and I'd help them do the recovery. And at the end of every single ransomware recovery, I'd often get asked, what should I have done to stop this? And the answer to me was pretty simple. It was like, stop trying to chase threats because they're always trying to get better threat detection, change their AV, change their EDR. It was very simple, just block what isn't needed, allow what is, limit the programs, and really take this zero trust approach to security. The challenge was the security tools in the endpoint protection space were very limited when it came to zero trust and very, very difficult to implement. So what we did is we went ahead and we created our own product, our own tool set, our own service and whole solution around zero trust. And what this meant is a client could deploy an agent, learn what their environment needed to look like, block what wasn't needed, and without putting lots of effort. Today, we have over 54,000 companies worldwide that use us, and that's from 2017 to start into 2025. In the last three years, we've multiplied our business by 20 times, and we continue to grow at that speed. A lot of the threats that people are dealing with today are also AI-focused threats. So businesses are constantly dealing with new threats. Phishing emails two years ago were often badly worded, poor English, very easy to spot. They were generated once and used a million times over, which made them very easy to detect. Now, when we see phishing emails, they're often generated on the fly, they're unique, they're very, very hard to detect, and they're written in perfect English. This makes it very difficult for companies or users to actually see what's malicious. In addition to this, when seeing AI-generated malware, again, three years ago, if you wanted to create malware, you had to be a developer, you had to be smart, you had to know what you were doing. Now, to create malware, you can literally just get onto a keyboard and ask ChatGPT to write you a reverse shell or write you malware. And you have to social engineer a little bit because ChatGPT has put a lot of controls, but it's still very easy to get around that. And we're seeing this increase. And as a result, we're seeing more and more ransomware. Endpoint detection tools turn to looking for file changes as a way of detecting ransomware. And now attackers aren't changing files, they're uploading them to the internet. So this is the biggest threat people need to think about right now, their data being copied and stolen. And the worst thing about this is even if you pay the ransom, you never know if they're actually going to delete your data or use it again in the future. One of the important things when we entered the Middle Eastern market, we, we had to understand was what everyone is looking for here, why ThreatLocker delivers more value and security than everybody else. Zero Trust is a really good strategy for stopping threats. Rather than trying to look for every threat that exists, we just focus on what is needed in your environment and how it needs to behave. If it's not, in your, on the list, it can't run. This is far more effective than using a traditional EDR or antivirus approach, which is saying, if it's known bad, we're going to block it. This has allowed us to grow really effectively. We've formed many partnerships in the Middle East that's allowed us to effectively grow. And also, a lot of our customers are willing to be reference customers, and this has helped us grow extensively in the market. When we were setting up in the Middle East, that we realized that we had to have a local uh, presence here. We had to have people on the ground, and we had to have offices here. Uh, initially, we came into the Middle East and we opened an office in Abu Dhabi. We actually expanded past the Abu Dhabi office now. We're, always, we're trying to open a bigger office in Dubai and that's expected to open the next two months with more staff on the ground. The staff are traveling to customer sites. They're meeting with resellers and partners uh, constantly and they're actually covering the entire region from Dubai through to Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Bahrain. One of the things we're really proud of is the number of awards we've won for both best ransomware solution, best zero trust, and best EPP solution across the globe and in the Middle East. We're very excited that ThreatLocker is really changing the game against ransomware, so companies can now win rather than just sitting ducks and being victims to ransomware. ThreatLocker is growing rapidly in the Middle Eastern market. We've seen, it's our fourth market we've entered, and we've seen the fastest growth out of any market. We see the seriousness of security here, is it's very serious, very focused, these companies, and they're really trying to make sure that they are the best in security. And this has allowed us to grow incredibly quickly with a lot of large logos, a lot of large organizations already adopting our technology. Thank you very much for your time today.